Hello YouTubers. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a subject that a lot of people have actually been asking me about, uh, specifically speaking about OData support for uh, ASP.NET Core 3.1. Uh, and I couldn't tell you how hard the OData team uh, was uh, in the past uh, few months was trying to push for a new feature uh, to support or a new uh, OData library to support ASP.NET Core 3.1, especially 3.1 because it's long-term support gonna go out there for like three years and it's a uh, very critical for the OData team to release something that is compatible with that. Um, Sam Zhu, uh, Saurabh and you know everyone on the OData team at Microsoft um, they released something just about um, eight days ago uh, that actually uh, is a beta version that could actually support uh, using OData with ASP.NET Core 3.1 and what I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you today is just uh, you know how easy that is uh, today and if you want to start uh, to play around with the beta version of OData that supports uh, Net Core 3.1 please go ahead I'm gonna push the code and I'm gonna push you more resources and even uh, Sam's um, uh, own GitHub repository so you could just go ahead and take a look and uh, you know follow and subscribe and keep track of all his contributions uh, to make sure this is actually a uh, to, to make sure that this happens so I'm gonna sh share my screen here real quick with you and uh, I'm gonna start creating a new project it's just a very simple ASP.NET let me um, let me make sure everything here is cleaned up before I start anything there you go and then let's go ahead and create a new project I'm just gonna build a quick ASP.NET Core web application I'm gonna call it OData or three, uh, three one, and I'm going to create that, and I'm going to make sure, like you can see here, three point one. That's has been a net core, and this API. When you create the net core projects like that, uh, they come in with their own model, like weather forest forecast and stuff like that. So I'm just going to clean all of this up, and I'm going to start from scratch because I want people to be able to uh, follow up with the code and build their own stuff. So I'm just cleaning up everything here making sure that things build and everything's good and dandy uh, there you go and then I'm just gonna create a new folder in here let's say models and these models have a student class here's a student class and let me zoom in a little bit and I'm just as usual just gonna put here an ID a name and a score maybe Something like that and with that I'm just gonna go create a, a new controller and I really don't care much I'm just gonna create an empty one with uh, read write actions and I'm just gonna call it students controller let's give it a second there <clears throat> all right Looks like it's trying to pull a few things. This I saw just the packages just got a new uh, just expanded. So there you go. So there's a controller. Um, actually, it looks like it built. Uh, yeah, it built an MVC controller. I don't want that. I want just a normal API controller. So I'm going to delete that and let's just go to the controller again and let's say API controller. So not an MVC controller an API controller and let's call it students controller there it is so alright all of these methods I really don't care about the one I really care about is the to get the list of students which is the I enumerable one at the top so I'm just gonna stay with that one instead of a string I'm gonna make it return the student model and I'm gonna create a quick list in here a list of students there you go and I'm just gonna create a couple of students real quick so here's an ID here's a name and here is a score let's give visual 100 and then let's let's do another one oops 
do it. Dot new void. A name. Josh McCall. And let's give Josh a score of 120. And I'll tell you why at the end I really I specifically use that particular model because we could leverage that with filtering and select and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, we have a bunch of students, right? And uh, this is our controller. I'm going to clean up using so that I don't need, and I'm going to change my launch settings. So instead of it targeting weather forecasts, it'll just target uh, students. Students, like that. So let's just go ahead and run this guy. The expectation is it's a web API. So um, it's just going to return a bunch of students. So if I say slash API slash students. So here's my students. It's basically this is the beautifier. So I could just view raw and that would be my my thing. So if you focus just on this part. That's pretty much what's coming back. All right, so that's ASP.NET Core 3.1, and this is an API that returns a list of uh, information. Now, we want to add uh, OData to this, and because, like I said, this is a beta, so this is at your own risk. It's not; it doesn't necessarily support everything. I am checking the include pre-release, and I'm going and I'm looking for OData uh, .core. So we should see here a library, this guy in here. And if you see Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.OData, it has a beta version in here. Uh, and again, I apologize for the people who can't see this through the phones. So you can't really zoom in on that guy. So if you uh, check that checkbox for um, uh, to include pre-release, and uh, you see the drop down in here, you'll notice that the latest table is 7.2.3 that doesn't support 3.1 and there's latest pre-release which is 7.3.0 so select that guy and install let's give it a second there to install all right and then let's let's uh, accept the agreement there's another agreement it pulls in a bunch of libraries with it all right so we installed the 3.1 uh, o beta release of O data. Now the rest is very very similar to things that we've done in the past. I'm just going to go in here and say enable query. So that enables the query. And if you go to startup, I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so I can show you uh, what's going on. I'm just going to get rid of technically all of this. Instead, I'm just going to type in add MVC use MVC. And then let's say this is my route builder. And if you look at your route builder, these things are going to be very, very familiar to you. Um, uh, we want to um, uh, first, if I want to say enable dependency, de dependency injection, something like that. And let's first add the OData service to this guy. So services services dot add o data right so adding o data here if you do control period you already added o data to your uh, code you'll notice a little error in here with using MVC because it says if you want to use MVC make sure you know you um, uh, do MVC options enable endpoint routing equal for false so what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna say MVC options for app controller and then we're going to go and say mvc options dot enable routing equal false so this will make that error disappear all right all right with that being said let's go and add in our o data stuff remember how we created an edm model right so i'm just going to go here real quick and create uh, i edm model control period is my edm get ADM model and if I remember that correctly uh, ADM uh, builder right and then new O data um, let's see O data convention 
let me let me find that real quick in here it's the odata convention model builder so there we go so in odata convention model builder right and then what i want to do is to go and say uh, for this adm builder dot um, uh, map uh, sorry entity set of the student model and then this guy targets students and then at the end I want to say return ADM builder ADM builder dot create uh, build I think it was get get ADM model there you go all right Great, so for the route builder, we're just going to go ahead and enable a bunch of OData stuff like select and filter and uh, what was it, uh, expand, I think. You have all these options, you could try them out, and then you have the route builder dot map uh, OData service route. Uh, so for the route name, I'm just going to say API, and for the route prefix, I'm also going to say API. And then I'm going to put in here get ADM model. So that's very pretty straightforward uh, creating ADM model based OData. Now, I tried with enable dependency injection, that didn't work out. So you probably, <clears throat> you can't really follow that exact same pattern, maybe because the library is beta. I have a lot of questions for the OData team around that, but that's basically the setup that we need to play around with select and filter and all that kind of stuff. So we just created, it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you're familiar with OData or if you read any of my blogs or previous videos, uh, there is no magic in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run my application. This is a moment of truth. It's loading. I don't expect it to work right away. I have to go and say slash API slash students. And we got an error, let's see. Cannot find the service container for um, non ODR route. Uh, ODR components for non ODR is usually a configuration issue. Call dependency injection. So let's go ahead and call dependency injection then. Let's go see here and say route builder dot enable dependency injection. Like that. Right? And then let's go ahead and run again and see if things work out this time so slash api slash students so here we go i have my students right here right now is the moment where we actually test if this guy works so i'm going to go ahead and say select name and it's not working it's returning weird stuff let's see why this has happened um so we have uh i don't i don't really think it's uh still uh very friendly with using api instead of odata routes so let's replace this with odata and see if that would work with us we probably don't even need that dependency injection part so let's run the application and see if that actually would do the trick for us. So here's the application. And I'm gonna say slash odata slash students. Okay, so that, that guy returns everything. And then I could go and say question mark select equal name. There you go. So this guy works. So it's not friendly, it's not super friendly with using API instead of odata routes. Uh, you don't really have to use uh, dependent injecting uh, dependency enabling dependency injection, but you have to change a few things on the uh, structure of the startup file to make things work for you um, uh, from a uh, from an OData perspective. So this is for for selecting name. Let's try filter now. If I go and say filter, so if I go to just students, it's giving me everything. And then let's go and say question mark filter equal. And then I want to say score is greater than a uh, hundred and ten. So that works. So it filtered the scores to the ones that are uh, greater than a hundred and ten. 
that's pretty much it. This is uh, really all you have to do to enable OData in your ASP.NET Core 3.1 project. Uh, I'm going to push that code along with uh, all the contributions and the discussions um, uh, with the OData team. They have their own public uh, GitHub repo. You could just go there and follow up with their latest and greatest changes. And I'm going to make sure, you know, I even document that with articles and, you know, more videos around OData and how you could enable it uh, with the latest and greatest uh, .NET Core um, releases. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out. Uh, please leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.